Over the past several years, you've joined us on 49 different journeys through nature, on our adventures along roads, across lakes, and through the wilderness. Now, join us for the 50th episode of Adventure Archives. It was on a Thursday morning that Andrew, Brian, and I all boarded planes to fly off to the destination for our 50th episode, Texas. After a smooth, sleepy plane ride, we landed for our layover and met up with Robbie in the airport. How was your flight? Uh, like any other flight. <laughs> we enjoyed our packed lunch, edamame, apples, plantain chips, and a steamed bun sandwich. I still had hours to wait, so I saw the others off on their next flight. Godspeed, good yep. luck. It's <laughs> fun hanging out for the 30 minutes. <laughs> Eventually, after a painfully long layover, I was up in the air, off to meet the others in San Antonio. While the layover was a bit painful, the views of the evening sky from the plane were absolutely stunning. Once Robbie landed, I headed to the airport to pick him up. We gave Andrew a call, but as per usual, he didn't pick up. Hey, this is Andrew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, we went back home. How was the wait at the airport? <laughs> it was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be. From the console, <laughs> right? We swiftly got packed up, then headed out. It was late in the evening, and we still had a long four-hour drive ahead of us. After Thomas crammed everything in his trunk, we headed out, driving past the shining lights of San Antonio. Before reaching our destination, we stopped to grab some dehydrated meals. Then, under the bright moonlight, we discussed our plans for the night. Where are we going, Thomas, and how long is it going to take us to get there? I think we're going to the Holiday Inn in Fort Stockton. It's going to take about four and a half hours. How are you guys feeling about this? I'm ready to just pass out the minute we get to the hotel, so I'll probably start early in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I can't complain. Unless I start driving, then I'll complain. <laughs> hey, we flew here. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Further out of the city, the stars shimmered above us. We continued driving into the night, making one more stop for gas, drinks, and assorted gas station vittles. <laughs> Pork rinds. Boredom eating. <laughs> Thomas was now clearly beginning to get tired of driving. This one's a struggle. You want to take over, Andy? No, but I'll offer it. <laughs> it's only fair. After he's driven like 99% of the miles we've driven. <laughs> it literally feels like we are in some sort of weird purgatory. <laughs> like if you look out, there's just a void of darkness. That is weird. It's like weird and flat and quiet. We headed inside, checked in, checked the breakfast hours, and headed up to our room. We were all exhausted, and we were happy to settle in and finally get some much needed rest. The next day, we woke up early in the morning and were greeted by the amber glow of a morning sky. We finished packing up our bags with all our camping supplies and plenty of water, then headed out. Outside, we saw a brewer's blackbird perched on the parking lot lights. Oh. 
Also in the lot were some feral cats, which retreated to a few pieces of kibble. We had another two hours of driving ahead of us. We headed out and got ready to make our way south towards Big Bend National Park. It was a perfectly clear day, and we were anxious to get to the park. We passed through some more small towns before emptying out into the open desert. We were getting excited for the day's hike. How are you feeling, Thomas? I feel much better this morning. It's a work day, and I'm not working. Are you guys ready for this hike? It's going to be tiring, but I think I'm ready. Ready as all are we. More and more mountains rose from the horizon as we got closer to Big Bend. Tall hills and jagged rocks were the backdrop of the highway and open fields of grass with grazing livestock, including cows, bison, and horses. As we drove, we also passed by a small outpost with essentials, a diner for food and coffee, and a gas station. We also saw this young buck prancing across the highway. Even more jagged rocks, hills, and mountains started surrounding us, giving us a taste of what to expect once we were in the park. Finally, we made it to the park's entrance. After paying to enter, we received a map of the park. It was massive, and the trail we were covering was only a tiny fraction of it. You don't usually associate the word whimsical with a desert but the many strange geological formations of the park gave it a fanciful, eccentric appearance. We continued driving along the park's scenery, making our way to the trailhead. As we drove, Thomas talked a bit about the location and the weather conditions. This is actually one of the most requested places we go on our 2018 road trip. This is not the weather I was promised. It's far warmer than it was supposed to be. Finally, we made it to the visitor center, but the lot was full. All right, so right now we're gonna unload all our backpacks at the visitor center. We gotta go down about half a mile and go park the car there. I'm looking for volunteers to come down with me. <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys in like 10 minutes. All right. Ready. All right, you wanna go back to San Antonio now? <laughs> <laughs> While Andrew and Brian checked out the nature center, we drove another half mile to park the car. I think that's it. All right, let's go. Now, we had to hike our way back to the nature center, and the scenery was already impressing. Yo, it's hard to get here, but this place is incredible. Wow. Once we had regrouped, we grabbed our bags and made our way to the trailhead. Here, Thomas saw an interesting plaque. In Ken Burns National Park series, they talk about Stephen Mather, who's really in a way one of the big enablers of the national parks. And when he died, every national park at that time was put in a plaque of Stephen Mather's face. Oh. So you can go to any national park at that time and you'll see something that looks just like this. It's in Yellowstone, Yosemite, Glacier, Hawaii, it was time to review our plans. From here, we'd be hiking south along the Laguna Meadow Trail to the west. We would camp at night on the south rim, then circle around the rest of the southern rim before camping in the west. Then, we'd backtrack a bit and hike up to Emory Peak before making our way back to the trailhead on the eastern side. We now continued on the trail, excited to get our legs moving and to breathe fresh mountain air. I'm good. It's nice to actually move on the trail. It's like during the car ride, you always get a little bit of anxiety about how the trip will be, but once you get moving, it's great. Along the way was a warning sign about dangerous predators. Black bears used to roam around here until like the 1940s, and then because of like ranching and hunting and stuff, kind of disappeared from the area and actually didn't return from Mexico crossing the border until the late 1980s. The trail took us through a flat section of the desert, but soon it revealed to us an amazing view of the window, a narrow opening between the mountains. Holy crap. <laughs> I was 
looking this way and this is great. And then I looked over here and I was just like, holy crap. And I was telling Thomas that I haven't seen like, mountain faces like this since Zion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while for you to be in a landscape like this. I'm just taken aback again by how beautiful it is. That's like a Perdica Valley view right there. Yeah. It's called the window. Ah. Uh, hey, yeah, Brian, I feel like you're getting what you missed when we went to Guadalupe now. Although, this does look like more green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like more, more lush. Because I remember when I, when you guys were hiking, you were like surprised to see like a tree in one area. <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic too, because we're here in the winter, but it's so green. <laughs> Along with the greenery were waves of golden grass. After a short while, we came across a junction in the trail. Which way are we headed now? Right still? I think we follow Laguna Meadow trails. Yeah. Every direction you look, it's just beautiful mountains. I was gonna say, there is no part of this mountain range that isn't hikeable. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's go. Just beyond the junction was a verdant valley. In the distance, bright blue Mexican jays flew among the treetops. It was an interesting environment with a mixture of deciduous trees and classic desert cacti. It's really funny because you come out to Texas and you imagine just like dry grass and cacti, but here we've got an oak tree that's actually turning colors. I don't know what to make of this landscape because there's like greenery everywhere and it feels much more lush than even what Ohio looks like right now. Like it feels way more lush than that. So what are these over here? It looks like mistletoe or something. Yeah, it reminds me of holly, but honestly I'm not 100% sure. It probably is like related to holly. It's got these like spiky spiny leaves. That's definitely juniper though, I can say that. Right? 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 That's a juniper? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> this feels a lot like uh, Yosemite to me, and you were saying it kind of feels like California. It feels like the San Gabriel Mountains right outside Los Angeles. Mm. So Andrew, do you have any idea why it seems like fall colors? My guess is that there are deciduous trees, but because it's like a warmer climate in general, maybe some of them haven't fallen off yet, but I'm not like 100% sure. I swear, the closer we get, the taller it looks. It didn't look that bad maybe half an hour ago. Wait, that's Emory Peak? <coughs> no, uh, yeah, that's Emory Peak up there. I think. So two days from now, we will be up there. That's the plan. That little polyp up there is really weird looking. While we admired the scenery around us, I saw another tree. This plant might actually be live oak, because I remember live oak had leaves that did not look like your typical oak leaves. Now is live oak the name of the tree, or does that refer to something? It's just the common name of it. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this is live oak. This is gonna sound real stupid, but Brian finally looped these through our little backpack straps here just while he was waiting. And this is the nicest thing ever. <laughs> I don't know why I, I refused to do it before. <laughs> I just always remembered, like I, I was sitting there looking at the packs and the things were dangling in the back. I just think about the times you're like, can you, can you get my hose for me? <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pre, pre get his hose for him. <laughs> As we hiked, Andrew stopped to talk about some of the desert plants around us. So this of course is the prickly pear cactus. Uh, we saw it back in Guadalupe, but it's such a versatile plant when it comes to food because you can eat the actual like lobes of cactus if you like strip the spines off and the outer skin off. There's a place near me that serves tacos with prickly pear cactus in them. And then they've got the little red fruits on them that have a really nice sweet taste. I feel like texture wise it's kind of like a slightly underripe melon and it's got a flavor that's almost like passion fruit-esque. But actually, I had a neighbor who had some prickly pears growing, and I remember picking some of the fruits. And you gotta pick all the spines out, but it tastes really delicious. Also growing nearby were some succulent-looking agave plants, and some woolly loco weed, a plant in the mint family. Along our hike, we stopped for a quick lunch break. The Laguna Meadow Trail is three miles total. Yep. Probably done a mile so far. Mm -hmm. where, where is it on the map exactly? Like probably around, around here. Right before the. We gotta do this. This then get down to here. It is really crazy how steep. consistently we do one mile per hour. 
Yeah. It's like, we can just like put, that's in the bank. You put it in the bank. <laughs> yeah. You take that to the bank. <laughs> now, we continued on, seeing more Mexican Jays in the distance before continuing uphill. Yeah, the bad news is there's going to be quite a few switchbacks and a lot of uphill today. But this is going to be the majority of the uphill for the trip, besides Emory Peak. <laughs> We continued hiking, enjoying the unexpectedly warm weather. I feel like I owe everyone an apology. The forecast said that it was gonna be a high of about 36 to today. Feels at least like low to mid 50s with the sun bearing down on us. There's a website I love to use, it's mountainforecast.com. And they'll tell you what the temperature is on a mountain peak. The base of the mountain was supposed to be in the upper 30s and that's 2,000 feet below us, so I don't know what's going on right now. Well, at nighttime, who knows, especially in a desert-type environment, so probably best that we are safe rather than sorry. We also have to carry all of our own water, and we're each carrying about six liters, so that's like 13.2 pounds. I actually feel that it's not too bad right now, but this is still the beginning of the hike. Ask me when we get to the campsite. Just off the trail, we saw a huge plant rising from the ground. We saw this last time we were at Guadalupe, but this is a sentry plant, one of the plants in the yucca or agave family. When we saw it fresh, it was like green with these really red seeds at the top, but now it's all brown and desiccated. But look, you can hear how like, this is like a solid chunk of wood right now. And it's kind of crazy thinking that this is related to asparagus, but you can kind of see the similar shapes of the little leaves here and stuff. But uh, probably not as tasty. <laughs> The trail continued leading us higher and higher into the hills and mountains. Provided we don't go down too much later, Emory Peak doesn't seem nearly as daunting. Like if we're already up this high. Yeah, that's Emory Peak. Oh uh, yeah, that really doesn't seem as daunting now, especially seeing it from this point of the trail. With every turn, we retreated to another view of the distant hills. <laughs> We also saw more birds and plants. So this desert plant, I think it's related to other yuccas and stuff, but you can kind of see it's got all this fibrous stuff. And on some of these, they're a lot drier and there's a lot of these dead brown fibers. And we can't have campfires where we're camping. And especially because it's like an arid environment, you know, there's risk of wildfire. But if you're in an emergency scenario, this stuff would make really great fluffy tinder if you collected enough of it. But also this bark here, the cedar bark, it's nice and fibrous, and if you like grind it up into a powder, that's stuff that'll catch a spark really easily. I feel like I'm hitting like a nice stride. Yeah. Good steady pace. I feel like we're making good progress and we're not too tired. Yeah. If this is more of some of the more severe elevation gain we're gonna experience, this is totally doable. Of course, I'll probably get these <laughs> Off in the distance, we could see the visitor center and Thomas proposed an idea that sounded none too appealing. All right, so what ridiculous idea was Thomas floating just now? Thomas is saying we should try to get to the summit of the mountain at dawn by somehow waking up at like 5 a.m. or something, which wouldn't even be enough time, I don't think. But. Wouldn't it be pretty to see like the sun rise over Mexico in the U.S.? Yeah, it'd be pretty to fly on a Pegasus through the <laughs> rainbows and stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> we continued hiking along the beautiful trail, stopping occasionally to observe some of the signs of wildlife around us. There's some scat line down here. scoop it doo doo up <laughs> And... I'm gonna guess it's from like an herbivore because it looks like a lot of plant material and I don't see any fur. And I've also heard carnivores usually have like a pointed tip on one of the one of the turds. But really the only ways to find out is to do a taste test. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> also along the trail were more desert plants. Alright, so here we've got a classic looking round spiny cactus. It's in the genus of hedgehog cacti. And then here we've got more of these agaves. I've talked about this before, but got this sharp needle point and you can actually like 
break that off and pull it out and it'll pull a fiber out and you can use it to like sew things. But agave is used to make uh, tequila. Yeah. And I think tequila can only be made in Mexico. It's got to be a specific type of plant specifically in Mexico. And you were saying for our post hike meal. Get a, just a little bit of tequila. Yeah. We are on the border. It's interesting, there's also this rhododendron looking plant right here. I don't know the exact species, but in the Smokies you see this stuff everywhere. And so I usually associate it with like really wet kind of foresty terrains, but here we have it growing in this arid environment. Well, that's a perfect heart shape. Oh yeah. Happy Valentine's from my prickly heart. <laughs> We now continued with our uphill hike. If you guys feel warm hiking uphill in that sunlight, it is a sudden shift as soon as you step in this shade. Wow. Wow, yeah, it's noticeable. Up ahead at the top of a hill was an open space soaked in sunlight. Yeah, this is like a completely different world. Dude, what is this? Is this an overlook here? It definitely looks like something. I mean, I think we should check Actually, this out. There are, yeah, there's like... Wow. Wow, we're about to see one heck of a view, man. It's like everywhere you look, there's something to behold. I feel like we're closer now. Is that a <laughs> different place? Of... No, that's the same place. What? Yeah, that's the, I don't know if conundrum is the right word, but that's the conundrum of mountain hiking. You feel like you go a lot and a little at the yeah. same time. It's so cool how these mountains are like jagged. Like on the way in, you were saying it looks like China kind of, because there's these jagged peaks and stuff. It's like really unique. And this is like a mountain range that lives independently in a desert, in the Chihuahuan Desert. This place is unbelievable. Look at Emory Peak up there. Also this hillside in the distance, there's like some patches of trees that makes me think of like the tallest plum tree on a hill that you have to go to for a pilgrimage or something. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys ready to keep going? Yeah. Let's go. Our hike now leveled out a bit, and the path was surrounded by green, rolling hills. Now, we entered a grassy section of the hills, where golden glowing stalks swayed in the wind. Okay, we should be coming up to the junction any second now. I think Thomas and Brian are already up ahead. Are there any nice chairs? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a nice log here. This'll do. This'll be where we camp tomorrow. This looks like it's gonna be a great campsite. <laughs> nice meadowy, grassy area. All right, wanna take a little, little breather? Definitely. All right, let's do that. We set our packs down, grabbed our snacks, and talked about the hike so far. Well, I was a little bit afraid that this would be too much distance, but this is great. already here. This and the weather. Mm, yeah, mm, everything's coming up mill house. <laughs> so what is this dried organic pineapple from mm -hmm. Barbara? Barbara, yeah. Thank you for Barbara for providing Barbara. these mm. snacks. Mm. Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I've got these like jelly drinks, lychee flavored. But my thinking with this is that since we might have limited water, I was like, well, I'm going to bring something that is both food and somewhat hydrates you as you eat it. <laughs> I want to know if that actually helps. Because yeah. I'm worried that it might make you actually more thirsty. That, that's a good point because it's so yeah. sugary. Yeah. We've had some of these similar things in uh, Minister Creek, but... Mm. <laughs> it's so sweet, but it is it does like feel like you're being hydrated at least. But it's really like kind of a shock to taste something like that while you're out here. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that texture. <laughs> <laughs> I love the texture. I'll have my own later. Want pineapple? Only wet fruit for me. <laughs> <laughs> Want one? <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I left my savory snacks back in the car. You guys have been ridiculing my butter-snap pretzels for so long that I <laughs> decided that I was not gonna. You don't need to take anything we say seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, my, my good sir. Brian, what are your impressions first time in Texas so far? Like the wilderness. <laughs> this is great, man. <laughs> I want to say it's like a mix of deciduous forests. Yeah, yeah. And the coniferous forests yeah. that I really like. You get that leafiness, but the ground isn't just 
covered with the yeah the it's like overgrowth that you're normal yeah <laughs> while we were talking some other hikers stopped by oh are you camping here oh, okay. oh cool we're camping nice here nice. tomorrow oh really yeah. yeah how much water do you guys usually bring that's the question then. <laughs> so, four gallons Four gallons. Okay, so that's, okay, like, that's about what we're carrying. That's four, about four gallons that, yeah. for two people. We're not. Have a great trip. Yeah, 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 we're not too far away from the, the same tent. from the bathroom. We continued on, approaching one of the toilets available on the trail. Restrooms were limited here, and the one near our campsite tonight was out of order. So the only alternative was using a wag bag, which none of us wanted to do. Yeah, it looks like there's the bathroom here or something. Is it like an open air bathroom? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Anybody need to go? I kind of wish I did. <laughs> I will as soon as I get back to the campsite, but it's just not how the body works. I mean, in an emergency, it's only like a mile to our campsite, so. The longest mile. <laughs> as we hiked, we talked about Thomas's new pants. Yeah, so tell us about the new tan pants. Those look very tan in this light. Yeah, right? They're good. You know, the problem with being a six foot three tall guy is like, good luck trying to find any <laughs> pants that, that'll like really fit you. If I wear boots, you can't tell that they're a little short, but. Pretty tan. <laughs> the legend continues. <laughs> Did you get them because like, they were tan? Yeah. We continued on, seeing glimpses of distant mountains through the trees. Eventually, we came to an amazing overlook along the trail. Wow, that's just like a whoa. Yeah, look at that. Wow, <laughs> that is surreal. It's so cool. There's like these sheer rocky cliffs there and then just this lush sweeping valley. Like that is incredible. This looks like um Hawaii. Um yeah. I forget that ravine. Why why yeah, why me why me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it feels there. like we're in it now. It's funny how an arid desert environment can be so reminiscent of like a lush tropical environment <sighs> and yet also be so different at the same time. Mhm. Mm this is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And it's difficult to see, but I mean, you got mountains oh, going wow, all yeah. the way out to Mexico, and those are tall mountains out there. I thought yeah. those were clouds at first. No, those oh, are, man. those are, that's Mexico. Wow. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this was worth all the effort to get out here. <laughs> Up there's actually Emery Peak up there, you can tell, because there's like these two little poles that I've seen in all the pictures. You know, it's kind of cool to see uh, how this approach is gonna be for when we go up Emery Peak on, on Sunday morning. It looks like there's a big gap there, so I'm curious which direction we're gonna be coming in from. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna be coming up the other side, uh, the back of it. But the two poles are definitively the highest point. I think so, I think so. Cool. I guess we'll find out soon enough. The trail flattened out again, and we approached the last junction that we would hit for today's hike. Tomorrow, we'll be coming from that direction back to here and back to our campsite. Today, we're headed on the South Rim Trail. Yeah, so the whole South Rim Trail was burned like in April of 2021, which means that the bathroom at the southern end of the South Rim Trail is gone. So tomorrow's gonna be a little tricky bathroom wise, but yeah, we'll probably see more signs of the burn too as we get further ahead. Cool, All right. ready? Yeah, last ready? lake, let's go. Through. The trail led us through a tunnel of trees before opening and revealing more sweeping vistas of the surrounding mountains. entered a burn section of the hills, where Andrew saw a distinctly southwestern plant. Well, we saw a lot of these during our southwest portion of the road trip. These are tumbleweeds. I feel like they must have tumbled a long way to get up here. <laughs> I love how perfectly round shaped they are, but whenever I see stuff like this, the first thing that comes to mind is, man, I 
would love to start a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, it's like, I'm looking around us, there are tumbleweeds everywhere up here. Yeah. It's like, this is where they come to die. They just can't go any further. Maybe this is where they start. Oh. I wonder if that has to do with the wildfire. Like either it was easier to start because of that, or maybe they've tumbled here because there's less brush. Look at this, man. This is like so satisfying. <laughs> it's like Bob Ross's hair. <laughs> we entered an area with clear signs of fire damage. This is completely different suddenly. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, this is so weird. Seeing all these burnt dead trees suddenly. That is really wow. impressive. It feels like we've come across some secret landmark or something. This is where you'd see a little nameplate pop up and we've entered a new area. <laughs> Scorched wildlands. Despite the wildfire and everything just being burnt around here, I mean, look at these things that are popping up already. It's not even been a full year yet. Technically, wildfires are good. They, Once they recover from it, like they can actually, be good. yeah, it fertilizes the ground. I'm honestly surprised it didn't spread more considering how dry and stuff and everything is. But... Look up there, though. Yeah, that's that's true. all. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. This was apparently the first fire that had happened in 70 years. But the plus side is that it would help prevent future fires in the area. continued hiking along the barren but beautiful hillside. On some sections, the path was covered in a fine ashy dust that billowed up with each step. We passed by one of the South Rim campsites, just north of where we'd be staying tonight. It was situated among the burnt hills. In the distance, there was a beautiful view of mountains, and we started wondering what our campsite would look like. Across the valley, Brian saw the path that we would be taking tomorrow. Actually, from here, you can See, our trail is going to be along this side of the mountain. You can see one trail might be ours, or ours might be a little bit higher, but basically we'll be circling back around here tomorrow morning. Now, as the sun began sinking in the evening, we hiked the last portion of the trail leading to our campsite for the night. The trail took us through a cold, shady portion of the hill. Man, that sunlight is calling to me. I hear you. It is freezing. I mean, I'm assuming that it's going to be just around the bend if people were saying that there's going to be a great sunset. Yeah, I'm expecting it to have like a perfect view. And if it's not, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> oh, here we are, here we oh. are. Oh my God. It's that warm good. glow of the sun. SR3. Let's go. SR388. Let you guys lead. Oh my goodness, dude. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so inviting to see that sunlight. It's funny, it's like we went through a dark scorched area and now we're in the golden sunlight. It's so warm. Yo, how high does it go? I don't know, dude. Making you work for it. They still get some privacy. Oh my God. Perfect. <laughs> oh man. Perfect. <laughs> Holy cow. So good. Oh my God, <laughs> this might be one of the top three campsites, man. Oh my God. <laughs> top three, I think this is, the, <laughs> I think this is top one. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> that just keeps getting better. Look at this. This is where we're eating my friend. Oh my God. Yeah, this is the best campsite. Maybe the best trail we've ever done. And that sun feels amazing. The view was absolutely stunning. Layers of crisscrossing hills that faded into the distant haze beneath the glow of the setting sun. After taking in the incredible view, we started setting up our campsite.
As the sun continued setting, we sat down to enjoy some food. I ate it at the perfect time. Man, yeah, perfect timing. Get a little sunset, plenty of rest, yeah. get to bed early, <laughs> have some dinner, woo! I think I'll enjoy more of jellies. <laughs> I think this was a good idea. I feel like I'm being nourished and hydrated all at once. <laughs> okay, I'll, t I'll take a squirt. <laughs> get a squirt of that dirt. Well, better, not, not bad, yeah. CC coming through. So that's Mexico? You know, I think most of what we're seeing is Mexico. I think we're looking west and so like, a lot of what you you see further south that way is going to be Mexico. So that mm. those two huge mountain ranges are definitely part of Mexico. I want to say, but then you see the the roads that are kind of shiny down there. I think those are definitely uh, in the U.S. Though. So mm. tomorrow we'll see much more of Mexico. Now we all poured water into our billy cans so that we could start cooking dinner. We were going with some easy, straightforward, dehydrated meals to save on weight and because we couldn't have a campfire. We filled up our meals and let them cook as the sun turned a brilliant crimson color. Andrew was skipping his meal because our campsite wasn't near a functioning restroom. Better to play it safe than sorry. All right. <laughs> dink, 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 dink. <laughs> Happy 50th. Yeah, that Mexican style adobo rice and chicken. Green curry for me. I got jambalaya. Brian's is very setting appropriate. <laughs> I actually really like spicy food on the trail. Same. I bet it's good in this weather. <laughs> Andrew's like, tell me about it. Tell me about <laughs> it while you eat it. <laughs> really good. I don't know if I put too much water, but it's more like a gumbo. But I, I think maybe that's supposed to be like that. As the sun sets, this scene just gets more and more incredible. Mm. The colors. Yeah, and like you can see more of the mountains. Purple, blue, orange. I mean, look how teal that is out there. Mm. It's amazing. Beyond compare, man. I put this as like best campsite we've ever had, and I'd wager that it's one of the best campsites in the country. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. I mean, I knew it was a good park, but I would never have expected something like this, like yeah. this spectacular. Looks like that sun is just starting to set too. After dinner, we had a small dessert. We've got some Persian snacks from Dara. Hey guys, here are some traditional Persian, in parentheses, Iranian snacks for your future adventures. Enjoy. Best, Dara. Thank you, Dara. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Dara. Thank you so much. So this is Gaz. It's a Persian nougat confectionery with rose water and pistachios. Originated 450 years ago in the city of Isfahan in Iran. All right. Okay, let's do it. This looks like something I've had before. I was going to say, it looks a lot like Turkish. It's probably in related kind of. Mm. 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 That nougat is delicious. Yeah. Mm. Very mild flavor, which is good. Not too sweet. I feel like you can actually get the hint of rose water in there, too. Yeah. It almost tastes like tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice sweet end to a sweet day. <laughs> now that it was dusk, we got ready to head to sleep. We stored our food in the bear box and readied our sleeping gear. But before heading to bed, we sat out to enjoy the stars and reflect on the journey so far. We were just talking about how excited we are that Brian's with us this time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm so glad I'm here. This I, is one of the most remote national parks in the lower 48. There's part of me that's like, oh, it's a shame this is so far out of the way, but I'm so glad that we get to experience this. I mean, it kind but, of makes it special, right? Yeah. That it's so far out of the way, because, I mean, it'd be great if you could just drive here, but making the trip out here and driving out here and preparing to do all this it really adds to the experience of making it worthwhile. On the one hand, it's completely unique and special, but on the other hand, we've also felt this sort of like incredible amazement and astonishment so many times before in other places around the country. I'm glad I get to experience this, but I'm also glad that you can still have that same experience no matter where you go. Mm, even after your 50th time, it's still yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what's the best part? <laughs> I'm gonna sleep really good today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so good. <sighs> Could use a toilet though. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to be lying on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot begin to describe it. I was thinking the only thing that would make looking at these stars better is if I was lying down. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm gonna go to sleep. Yeah.
Good times. Thanks, guys. See you in the morning. <laughs> As we headed to bed, we looked up and saw the most incredible display of stars we had ever seen. The next day, the sun rose high in the sky, and the view from our campsite was perfectly clear. A waning daytime moon hovered in the sky above, and sunlight sparkled through the branches of the trees. Everything around our campsite was quiet and peaceful. As the sun rose higher, Andrew and I stood in its light to warm up. Eventually, we all woke up, and while Thomas checked out the view, we talked about how we had slept. That was one of the most comfortable nights of sleep I've ever had. The perfect temperature, and we slept for a literal 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of the night, I like had to pee, and I was a little cold. So I went outside and peed, and then I like put on my sweatpants and did like 10 push-ups in the tent, <laughs> and then zipped myself up before the body heat could escape. <laughs> but I, I slept pretty well, but I did wake up frequently. I think I had trouble like sleeping when I was on my back. Eventually I started like rolling onto my side to fall asleep, but then when I roll on my slide side to sleep, my shoulder gets sore, so I always have to eventually wake up and then like change positions. Getting too comfortable with my hammock. Like how comfortable <laughs> that is. Sleeping on the ground's tough now. <laughs> I am I am anything but a back sleeper and so I think Robbie had to deal with me just kinda like slowly rotating like a rotisserie chicken <laughs> throughout the whole night. <laughs> He's but, stewing in his own juices. <laughs> but I, used I, to, I slept very well. Definitely yeah. wasn't cold, which was nice. I used to be a back sleeper completely because of camping, but the air mattress like enables sleeping on your side, so I think sometimes that just feels I did, more comfortable. I did shove you awake a few times because you were snoring right in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I like pushed you and you are like, huh? I was like, you're snoring. I remember that actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was probably on my back. I, apparently I snore when I'm on my back. This view is incredible this morning. You can just see like everything so much more clearly. We have an amazing view of the Santa Elena Canyon. The Santa Elena Canyon is kind of one of the uh, landmarks of Big Bend that separates the U.S. from Mexico. So if you're look at, looking at that canyon over there, everywhere to the right of the canyon, that's the U.S. Everywhere to the left of the canyon is Mexico. The river kind of comes out, the Rio Grande comes out there and makes a sharp left from our perspective and starts to hug that mountain ridge and uh, slowly kind of drift away from it. Yeah, I was gonna say, the, there's like two interesting peaks that almost look like castle peaks, but those are the uh, mule ear peaks, but I keep looking at them and thinking they look so interesting and unique. Mm. But that whole cliff face that that canyon comes out of runs north to south, and so the river's like running kind of like west to east, right? Yeah. That is super cool. It looks like a prehistoric riverbed. It's like one of those moments where you wish you could just be like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and go just walk across the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Skipping breakfast today, I assume. I was thinking we should hike to where the bathroom is and have coffee there. Yeah. At the very least, we should hike closer to it. Like, I'd say yeah. within a yep. mile to half a mile of the bathroom. Nah. Coffee at the bathroom. Is, yeah. Um, it sounds very... Yeah. <laughs> That's a next level move. <laughs> <laughs> So there's no water here, so you have to carry all of your water with us. And just to give you an idea of what that means, that means I've got three liters here, I had three liters here, and then I don't know where the bottle's at, but I had another one liter bottle. You have to carry all of this, and it weighs quite a bit. 
in the warmth of the morning sun, we started breaking camp and getting our things packed up. Before heading out, we took one more look at the view from our backyard. And then we were off. We made our way out of the campsite and back onto the main trail. Today, we were retracing our steps a bit and headed north, but the scenery looked unfamiliar in the new day's light. This looks way different in daylight. It's really kind of cool, actually. The, the burned trees are a little unfortunate, but the golden grass is amazing. The way um, every view here just dynamically changes as the light and the sun moves across the sky is awesome because of the, all the mountains blocking the light or allowing the light through, just like how the view this morning completely different from what we saw last night because we could see so clearly. So actually, later this day, we're actually going to be walking along that side on the trail. And if you look carefully, you can actually see a little bit of the trail peeking out right over there. As we hiked, we noticed the tip of Emory Peak sticking out in the distance. We would hike that tomorrow. But for now, we continued on. And along the way, we bumped into a few fans of the show. So I'm Chad from San Antonio, here with my family. Barbara Jean, Maureen. Very and good. to you guys, really good to see you. We watch you all the time, so pretty exciting to catch someone you watch a lot. So. We continued on, and I spotted some signs of wildlife off the trail. So yesterday we saw some poop just lying on the ground, and I thought it was like herbivore poop, but this definitely belongs to a carnivore. And one, you can see there's a ton of fur in it, but I think there's even like some bone fragments. So I'm wondering if this is scat from a coyote or maybe like a, I know gray foxes are common around here. So maybe it's one of those. The path continued downhill along another amazing view of hills. Eventually, we reached the junction we had passed yesterday and now continued along a new section of the trail. Along the way, I actually spotted some mushrooms. This is the first fungus we've seen this whole trip, and it's <laughs> dry and desiccated like everything else, but uh, I think it's in the Tremetes genus. I'm just growing along this dead log, but obviously with the uh, lack of rain and stuff, mushrooms are not a common thing around here. The trail passed by a campsite on one side, and on the other, we saw a white-tailed deer grazing on the hillside. Everywhere we went, the park continued to awe and inspire us. This is literally the type of landscape I've always dreamed of exploring. Like this is kind of what I had pictured backpacking was in my mind before we did it. I was like, oh man, I bet you go to like mountains and then valleys and then little spires in the distance. We took a quick break for food, then continued on. We passed another campsite and continued through the wooded section of the trail. We passed by yet another campsite, making quick progress on the trail this morning. Okay, this is CO1, which means that we're really close to the bathrooms now. Get up to the bathrooms, have breakfast, and continue on. In the distance, we saw some sort of strange structure not far from the junction. <laughs> the universal sign for toilet is a moon. Now that we had reached the junction, it was time to drop our packs and enjoy the morning with some coffee. A big bag there, boy. Right. You like put everything in there? While the others broke out yeah. the stoves to brew coffee, I had just finished using the toilet. Top 10 best poop of my life. <laughs> <laughs> we put like the cup on the... We've got... High wire coffee from Joan. These are steep. It's like a tea bag. It's yeah. interesting. Oh, cool. that's not good. Grounds and hounds. This is off trail. Tasty notes of dark chocolate, vanilla, and graham cracker. Mm. Uh, this was provided by my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Very... We got all the coffee prepared. Then sat down to drink and share each cup. Cheers. Cheers.
Mm. Oh yeah. Mine's very good for me. I'm sure none of you would like this. <laughs> I mean, this is really good. Black coffee. You wanna try mine? <clears throat> I'm warning you, it is sweet though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that is like. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I like this one the best. I think I like Andrew's the best too. Yeah. Yeah, I love black coffee that has no sourness and just like has that nice mm. earthen taste. Brian's tastes like you are frolicking through <laughs> hills made of cotton candy. <laughs> <or something. laughs> yeah, you should you try a sip of this. I yeah, want to see your reaction. Like, that's weird. Oh yeah, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, yeah, you, you like some sweet stuff. <laughs> Like I said, I didn't know if there was sugar in there, so <laughs> no, I like sugar. We took our time enjoying the afternoon and freshening up at the bathroom, then got ready to head out again. Uh, did you just do a wardrobe change? Yeah, I it's did. in your shirt? Yeah, I feel like I have to revert back to my original tan pants self here. So, my backpack's a little bit light, and I was going to be like, I could take some stuff, but if you're packing extra clothes, then no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to make that sacrifice. <laughs> It's funny because uh, this reminds me of our first Smokies trip in 2012. One, because he packed like three garbage bags full of clothes or whatever. <laughs> but also we were like hiking through that burnt area. Remember that one? Yeah. That part of that trail? Oh, yeah. It was all storm torn and stuff. Where's your first trip? How, how things change so little. <laughs> and this is where we'll be going tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. We passed by some large rocks then went to check out the structure we had seen earlier. Now, I'm assuming this is for cattle, but it could also be for horses. I think it's for both. horses. So these are like cabins you can stay in? Is that, I think it said that on the map, right? It's called cabin, but I don't think it's one you would stay in. Could oh. be for like rangers, maybe. This yeah. is boot cabin, I believe. I think a lot of times you can take your horses up here, but if you're gonna camp, you gotta put your horses somewhere where they're not gonna get loose. So this would be where it is. It looks like this is just like a storage place rather than a cabin. The, the, maybe there's an actual cabin down there, but because this is locked up, but there's like <laughs> a rope swing or something. Oh, I don't know what that's for. This looks pretty cabin. dilapidated. Cabin's got some character, man. Boot cabin. It's got a little sitting bench right here. Oh, yeah. There was also a spring just off the trail, but everything was completely dried up, so we decided to keep hiking forward. As we hiked, we got an even closer look at the dried creek bed. Yeah, all the information we looked up ahead of time said that you cannot rely on the water. This water source is actually marked on the map, and right now it is completely dry. The trail now took us across the creek bed and through a canyon. Along the way, we saw some stagnant pools of water sitting in the recesses of the rocks. We passed by some fallen, burnt logs, and Andrew spotted an interesting tree. So this is another oak tree and it's got these skulls on it. These are not like fruits or nuts or anything that grow naturally on the tree, but it's something where an insect will like inject something into the tree, usually lay larva or eggs in there, and then it'll create this mutation of a growth. You can see some, there's some holes in some of these, but the wasps will come out and emerge, and that's how they reproduce. This is a dumb question, but why is this place called Big Bend? It's because when you look at the Rio Grande out there, the amount of bending that happens in the river is pretty big. <laughs> really, I think what it is, is when you look at Texas, there's a big bend in the border, and that follows the Rio Grande. And so I think, you know, when they're naming the park, they're like, well, it's the big bend in the river, so. As we continued through the canyon, it was amazing to see the varying terrain all around us. Oh, wow. it, it just hit me that we've kind of transitioned from hiking along these sides of these like hills and mountains and seeing these cliff faces in the distance, and now we're just hiking in the canyons beneath them, and they're, we're right up there against them. The trail now crept uphill through a section with patches of golden grass sprouting from the rocky soil. It really 
is just such a weird and unique landscape, but also so remote. And it feels like there's secrets around every corner. In the distance, we could see a cave hidden in the cliff face. This part of the park really felt like something out of an old fantasy novel. Across the way, we could see other hikers taking the path we had hiked up earlier, far up in the hills. And then we reached our next junction. So our previous plan was actually to take this trail, the Northeast Rim Trail, do that loop, see some of the sites there, but it's actually closed during a period of the year for uh, peregrine nesting. But I think all the good views are on the southern half anyways. We're gonna see the views in a second anyway, so. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. Do. We originally were going to continue east along the East Rim Trail, but because it was closed ahead, we decided to continue heading south. We continued making our way through the canyon. The hot, dry sun was bearing down on us as we trudged along. Now this feels like a real desert down lower, dry <laughs> riverbeds. It's a cacti and like not nearly as lush as it was earlier. Yeah. We now came across another dry, rocky riverbed. From there, the trail started winding uphill higher and higher. On these hills, we saw more of the soft golden grass all around us. Well, the environment here keeps changing. Like we went through a burnt section earlier, but it felt completely different from this. Dude, that grass looks so soft. I just want to roll my face in it. <laughs> trail wound higher and higher along the grassy hill. We would soon reach a junction, which would reveal something incredible at the crest of the hill. Wow, oh my god. Oh, my god. Oh my god. What? <laughs> At the top of the hill, we stopped to have a snack break. At the beginning of this trip, this sounded terrible. Right now, like, you look like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <yeah. laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Ding, 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 okay. ding. Mm. 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 Oh, that is not as sweet as I was worried it might be. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a spot, doesn't it? Mm. Got a little, what, boba's in it? It's like little jelly bits, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just as the jelly goes through the hole, it's like very alarming. <laughs> <laughs> we sat along the cliff's edge for a while, taking in all of the majestic views this land had to offer. Eventually, we continued hiking along the South Rim. All around us were amazing views of distant mountains and canyons. And in the other direction, we could see Emery Peak jutting above the hills. We kept hiking along the trail, and everywhere we went, we were met with an even more amazing overlook of the landscape.
trail now turned north again, away from the rim, and towards the section of the trail we had already hiked. You guys ready to go back to the camp tonight? Yeah. Laguna Meadow Trail, 1.2 miles to that junction we hit earlier this morning, then another 0.6 miles from there, 1.8 miles or so. Let's do it. Let's do it. We passed by the campsite that was south of ours, then continued along a cliffside trail headed north. Eventually, we arrived back at the campsite we had stayed at. Ooh. Anyone want to take a final look at the campsite? Sure. I don't remember coming up this way last time at all. I think the different lighting made it look different, but man, this is a great campsite. Man, what a view. It's funny how it feels like home after one night, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you saw some plants yesterday? Yeah, yeah, there's all those nice trees that are creating a shady grove for us. So this is called alligator juniper. You can see why the bark is so rough and textured like an alligator skin, but if you come to this side, wood is so red. And then over here is a Colorado pinion pine. Before I ever went camping, I always associated pines and spruce with like cold alpine areas, but this is one that grows in a desert environment. And it's funny because a lot of these trees, I can recognize like what family or genus they're in. But when you are in a different environment, it's a lot like speaking or trying to read a foreign language. Like going from English to French, where you know, there's certain words that you can tell what they mean, but there's others where you're like, I have no idea what that is. Now, in the late afternoon sun, we retraced our steps, heading back to the junction that we had passed by this morning. In the distance to our right, we could see the canyon trail we had just hiked through earlier today. With all the retracing of steps, we had definitely hiked a fair amount today. So have you reached the end of your rope yet? <laughs> I'm actually feeling not too bad. The thing that I'm dealing with right now is hunger. <laughs> I've got, I've got to, I think I've got to start rationing my trail snacks for tomorrow. I probably didn't eat enough through the course of the day because I'm feeling sluggish. We again passed through the burnt hillside we had hiked through earlier, hiking by the familiar view we had seen from our campsite. Eventually, we arrived at the junction where we stopped to rest our legs. In the distance again, we saw Emery Peak above the treetops, as if calling to us, challenging us to hike it. We continued westward. The late afternoon sun sank lower and lower, casting an ever more golden glow on us. We had eventually reached the bathroom along the trail and discussed whether or not we should eat dinner here and try using the toilet before settling into our campsite further to the north. Well, why don't we just pull up here? We each kind of take our turns going to the bathroom. I eat here. Don't here to go, go. But you go for me. I'd rather eat at the campsite, honestly. All right, let's go. While the others went on, I stayed behind to give the bathroom an attempt. Brian waited for me at the junction leading to the campsite while Thomas and Robbie moved on ahead and the hike to the campsite greeted us with an amazing view of the Chisos Mountains. I know you just picked whatever campsites were left, but you did a really good job picking campsites. <laughs> Man, this is really tucked back in here, isn't it? <sighs> Maybe it's on the other side of this hill. But alas, our weary legs hiked on and on with no campsite to be found. You know, it's starting to feel like this campsite is just a myth, a fable, Atlantis. Finally, through some brush and trees, we saw the sign for our campsite. Oh man, thank goodness. We put down our packs and rested, waiting for the others. Eventually, we saw Andrew hiking in. Oh man, first of all, the view was incredible on the way in, but this was a hike. <laughs> <laughs> I kept wondering like, where did they go? Like, <laughs> we just kept going and going and going. Yeah, just endless. <laughs> yeah, amazing view though, uh, on the way in at least. Beautiful meadow now too, this is. Yeah, 
great. Thoughts? On the campsite? The hiking. <laughs> hiking can go. Take care of itself. <laughs> that was the first time I legitimately got angry on the trail. <laughs> I was like, where is this? <laughs> we just kept hiking and hiking. <laughs> As we prepared dinner, we shared our thoughts so far. How am I feeling? I'm feeling like you should ask me how I'm feeling after I put some food in my stomach. That was close to the end of my rope. Like, <laughs> if we had gone any longer, then I would have been like, okay, it's time to start killing somebody. <laughs> would have been one of you three. <laughs> you know, the definition of interminable is a picture of that part of the trail. <laughs> Man, I just hope I don't have to poop tonight. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing on my mind. Here's the thing, if you have to poop at like three in the morning, just let the rest of us know and we'll meet you over there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just time to get on the trail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While we waited for our meals to cook, we set up our tents at the cramped campsite. You know, I didn't really eat that much today. Yeah. I had one sandwich and some granola. And a juicy lychee. <laughs> a juicy lychee. <laughs> All right, mine's done. I'm going to go ahead and eat. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me go look at that. Okay. Oh, that looks good, uh, man. Kind of jealous. Ooh, mine's a little watery. Oh, he's a little watery. But that's all right. Fettuccine Alfredo chicken for me. <sighs> I can't leave you guys suffering like that. Uh, Take a small bite. Uh, that's fine. I want to. Oh, wow, that's good. That's mm. interesting. Mm. That's yeah, that, that is yeah. really good. Oh uh, man, I should've gone with that, not the green cray. <laughs> Every bite is like the goddess blowing the wind on me. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, even though that last stretch wore our patience thin, today's been an amazing day. Mm. Oh, yeah. I was telling Thomas on the way in, some trails, you look at the map, and you're like, oh, that's not too bad. And then when you actually do it, it's terrible. And some, it's you look at the map and you're like, that's gonna be really bad. And then it's not too bad. That was this one. <laughs> Except for the last stretch. <laughs> yeah. Which was funny because we said, oh, that's not gonna be that bad. <laughs> Expectation is a thief of joy. 24 grams of dietary fiber in this. That poop's gonna be flown tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so seriously, for tomorrow, I say let's get up early. Obviously, let's try to make it by sunrise, but also let's not kill ourselves trying to do that. No. And let's not <laughs> abandon each other, I see. Definitely don't abandon each other. Okay. I hear you loud and clear. All right, Brian, to disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not bad at all, but it's, it's exactly not what I wanted. I just wanted something more rich, like the fettuccine. Yeah. Nobody wants your three bean chili mix. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's fair. The sun began to sink behind the hills as evening set in. As we sat outside and enjoyed the cool evening air, we enjoyed another small snack for dessert. Okay, so this is from Dara again. This is Lava Shack. Essentially, this is fruit leather, Persian style, which means it's sour. Made with sour cherry, pomegranate, apricot, and other fruits. Ooh. Oh, wow. You know, I'm gonna put all three in my mouth at once. Mm. That is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. It's like that tart cherry drink that we've had. I like it more than typical fruit leather because it feels like I got more mm. kick or something to it. Ooh, that sourness comes later. It tastes like fruit leather with wine infused in it or something. Ooh, that's like plum wine. Mm. Yeah. I really like the shape. It's like an Andy's <laughs> mint. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good shape. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you. After that snack, we whipped up some backpacking creme brulee. That is. Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. Right. This wow, is this okay. is a good fiftieth celebration. All right, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a scoop, but I'm not gonna eat it until. Wow, that looks good. I'm in trouble. <laughs> 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 to fifty more. To fifty more. To 50 more. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. Here, I'm gonna take one and pass it back. No, mm. no, that was a that was a look of pleasure pain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. Could not have asked for a better 50th episode, man. And in the sun's golden light, we reflected on the many adventures we had been on over the past several years. So, this is 50 episodes of Adventure Archives. Yeah. That means not only 
Have we been on 50 backpacking trips? Well, we've filmed 50 backpacking trips. It kind of like crept up on me at least to realize that we were on our 50th episode. Like we were just filming and doing our thing. And then suddenly it was just like, hey guys, uh, our next one's the 50th episode. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh crap. <laughs> well, it, would like, it kind of like dropped in the middle of winter. So we were like really worried about what to do would be worth it. And then we got this trip, which was clearly worth it. When I think back to the beginning of Adventure Archives, I really like, I cannot express enough how grateful I am that there are people out there who have supported us. <laughs> like, I remember when it started, I kept thinking about filming it during the summer before I started grad school. Cause my going to grad school was this whole like ordeal in my life. And finally on Labor Day weekend, right when school had started, we went to Dolly Sods and filmed that episode. It's just crazy to think that like this dream has become a reality after so many years. There is very little that I have believed in more than what we've done with Adventure Archives. Like lots of stuff you really hope you like it and you hope that other people will like it. Yeah. But it was like, after we made that first episode, my belief in like, oh yeah, this is, I really like doing this and I really like what we've made has never been stronger for anything else that I've done. On a personal note, you know, I'm very appreciative you guys let me tag along over these last <laughs> few years. I haven't been on all 50 of the episodes that you guys have been on, but you know, the three of you are related, brothers, cousin, I was just your neighbor next door. So, you know, I feel like if anyone should be grateful, it should be me that you guys have let me tagged along these last eight years. Yeah, just, it worked out been, perfectly. You've been welcome. <laughs> Thank An you. An excellent addition. If you do something steadily enough, just a little bit at a time, eventually it can amount to something way bigger than mm -hmm. what you thought you could do. Because like, if at the beginning we're like, let's make 50 episodes of something, that sounds impossible. But then you just do it a little by little over the course of nine years now? Oh, yeah, nine. Wow. Almost nine years, yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, when, you, when you put it that way, That's it's like crazy. holy cow. Yeah. And I remember like when it first started, it was such a good escape to be able to like meet up and edit those. Cause it was a way to just put all of my thought energy towards something like that mm. instead of thinking about yeah. school and stuff. I Man, another... yeah. That first episode we edited, we were in the back of the Zumba studio. Yeah, yeah. And we were just like, like at one point it was, I was doing like the title sequence and Andrew was right behind me doing like the editing. Man, that first title sequence was really bad. <laughs> but I remember at the time we were super proud of it. <laughs> we're like, this is great. I like going outdoors, but I don't think I would have ever had the passion strong enough to want to go outdoors consistently, especially if it was just like by myself. And the fact that we had this really like just it created this this thing that we had together. Yeah. Um, but the momentum of all this is really kind of fueled by our viewers and our fans. I think to me that is the most astounding thing of anything. Yeah. Uh, just on this tra trail alone, we've run and we've ran into a few people that already recognize us. Um, people who have reached out to tell us, you know, how important just like representing outdoors, people in the outdoors is, can be. Um, I, I honestly do not know how to handle that. And, you know, I'm, I'm constantly shocked and amazed by the support that we've gotten over the last several years. Yeah. yeah. Even from episode one. Endless thank yous that people even watch this at all. <laughs> Let alone get something out of it. <laughs> you know, where it started was just making goofy outdoors videos on our trip to Yosemite yeah. and Hockey Hills. Literally just taking pictures of our vacations and then stringing them together into yeah. videos more than adventure archives more than anything we've made like any product the thing that i cherish the most about the 50 episodes is us for getting to spend time together and yeah. having these experiences yeah. together i would throw all of this away if it meant that we could keep doing this mm -hmm. even if the form of this changes i'm down for doing this until the day we die <laughs> like we can do it like even if it's just like going to the park. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Sitting together and having a coffee, that's... 40 years from now, we're all in walkers, <laughs> you know, like little scooters going through. <laughs> well, to expand on that, I would just be like, even if we do stop doing this, let's not stop doing this. Yeah. 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 One of the goals with these was to really make it feel like people were on the adventure with us. And I think we've gotten so many comments that say it feels like they're right here with us. So thank you all for joining us on all of these adventures. Evening now faded away to dusk. Above the horizon, the last dim glow of orange sunlight reflected off of Emory Peak in the distance. 
We had made ambitious plans to wake up super early tomorrow to try and summit the peak on our last day. But for now, we had to prepare our tents, put away our gear, and get ready for an early night's sleep. How are you doing, Tommy? <laughs> Hello. You look comfy already. <laughs> How are you feeling? Whatever. <laughs> 7 p.m. We are going to try to wake up at 4 a.m. You guys are so optimistic. I, I, I admire you. Well, I think it'll be worth it. Once we're at the top and we've forgotten the pain that it took to get there. <laughs> it's only huh? 7.30. <laughs> but good night. I'll see you in nine hours, which will be at four in the morning. Yeah, that's a long night of sleep. Yeah, that's not bad. That's assuming we go to sleep. That's a you problem. <laughs> if you know, we wake up at 4 a.m. tomorrow and get back at a reasonable time or we get back at an unreasonable mm. time tomorrow and I don't want that. Mm. That's a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow we're going to wake up, pack our things as fast as possible, but we're going to stop first at the toilet, make sure everything's empty. <laughs> and then once we uh, get to the base of the trail up to the peak, if there's a place to store stuff, we're going to empty our bag significantly, hike to the top, and the rest is history. It was four in the morning when we woke up to the unpleasant sound of a phone alarm. We immediately scrambled to pack up all of our gear and get a move on. Yo. <laughs> Dude, it's so weird. I had like so many dreams, but the last one I had was that it was like 2 a.m. and we were all awake and we were like, all right, let's just do it. <laughs> and then your alarm went off. <laughs> we packed up our gear under the glow of the moonlight, then headed out into the night. We made the long hike from our campsite to the junction with the main trail. No wonder that was so hard last night. That was 0. 0.42 miles. <laughs> Jeez. Well, at least we're All making right. decent pace. Yeah, bathroom it up. Now, we continue to the next junction, where the toilet was located. This is the first checkpoint in the toilet. Whoever needs to is going to use that, and then I think I'm good for now. Brian went to use it while we stood around and chatted. I was telling Andrew, this is actually like my favorite time to go hiking, because it's the exact opposite of night hiking. At night, you know, you're like, okay, I'm tired, I'm trying to find a campsite. In the morning when it's dark, it's like, it's only gonna get better from here. Yeah. After the first bathroom break, we continued on through the dark. Even at night, we could make out the distant mountain peaks looming above us. Now, we arrived at the next junction where we had had coffee yesterday morning, and I stopped to use the bathroom while the others waited. And then we were off again. In the dark, we could see the strange silhouette of a rocky spire sticking out of the valley ahead of us. We hiked along a rocky bluff, making a decent pace, and finally arrived at the junction leading to Emery Peak. There's these really big bear boxes we can use. Excellent, excellent. This is if we choose not to carry our pack, it has to be stored in here. We stored our packs in extraneous gear, then continued on to the Emery Peak Trail. In the distance, a small sliver of red-orange sunlight shone through the dark clouds. The break of dawn was upon us. Wow, this is a hike for the century. <laughs> Yet even as the sun began rising, we could still see the moon looming above shrouded by the voluminous clouds in the sky. The higher we got, the more amazing our view became, especially with the golden light. In the distance, we could again see the visitor center. So, uh, what are our thoughts on doing Emory Peak while it's dawn, Robbie? Same question I asked two days ago and got spat in the face. <laughs> I told you at the time, though, I'm more than willing to eat my words. <laughs> and today, my words made a hearty breakfast. As dawn became morning, the daylight revealed more and more of the incredible view all around us. Despite the amazing views, the climb suddenly became rougher as we approached the summit. It's getting super steep. Getting chilly too. 
The sky above was beautiful, but we were focused on trudging up the steep, rocky hill. Eventually, we came to a small resting spot nestled in some trees. There's a good sitting log here. All right, we're gonna take a quick break here and make the final push. All right, guys, ready for the final push? Ready, let's do this. Just past the trees, the trail suddenly shot straight up with a steep, rocky scramble. We made our way up the jagged rocks, and before long, had arrived right at the base of the last ascent. Holy crap. These are like the windows on Whitney. Go. Oh my god, dude. That is next level right there. That is something else, holy crap. Almost looks like there's a route down here. Yeah. I'll let you take that one down, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> The last 30 feet of elevation was a literal climb up rocks and branches. And then we were at the top. It's funny because it's not really a distinct open peak, it's just rocks. <laughs> but the view is incredible. And it's incredible that we can see everywhere we've been too. Like most of this hike has had this point in view the whole time. It does make me wonder, whoa, is there some way up there? <laughs> That one is definitely higher, but this is close enough. You know, Robbie, that brings me back to that saying I heard a few years ago, those who climb to the tops of mountains are in love with themselves <laughs> and in love with uh, oblivion. <laughs> no, I think it's that we're actually in love with views like this. That is the view to take the cake. Yeah. Everywhere we looked, we saw something distinct and amazing jagged mountain peaks covered in trees, hillsides scorched and burnt from wildfires, distant deserts glowing in the sunlight, and pillars of stone jutting out from the rocky ridges. At the top of the peak, we perched ourselves on some rocks and reflected on our hike through the Chisos Mountains. That was a hell of a scramble up, but I am really glad that like this mountain we all got to do together. This is a heck of a capstone for this trip. Yeah, yeah. almost literally. <laughs> Brown, what were your thoughts? Uh, when I'm climbing up mountains, head empty, no thoughts. <laughs> no, but seriously, it was definitely worth it, like uh, hiking it with you guys. You know, I, I know you guys know I'm, I'm leaving Texas this summer, and I was always kind of on the fence, is this gonna be worth the, the drive out here? So glad it is, and I'm so glad you guys came out here. Loved it. On to the next mountain? Yeah, man, 50, 50 trails down, 50 episodes down, plenty more to go, though. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's do, it. Let's do it. In the distance, sun rays cast light on fantastical cliffs. Everywhere we looked, grassy hills and jagged rocks surrounded us for hundreds of miles. What the future will bring for the four of us is unclear. But whatever it is, we'll face it head on and share the adventure for all to enjoy. Whatever the future may bring, we'll always hike together and journey into nature, into the wild, into the unknown, because we are Adventure Archives. out there for us You'll find out, you'll find out soon enough Dragging my feet, dragging my soul through the dirt Moving along, trying to move on forwards Journey into the Tears 
left to shed When you're trying to survive, got no time but to dance with death Wind howls high as I crawling down below Belly ache about the pain but you know what you gotta do Into the I think I got a pretty good momentum going up. So uh, I'm gonna beast mode it down to the car. Godspeed. See at the bottom. Go my, go my little birdie. You see my backpack without me. <laughs> think kindly of me. <laughs> What's uh, your name? Uh, I'm Ming Yang. <laughs> yeah, so this year we are just like traveling and hiking. We are trying to hike all the national parks this year and next year, so. Oh, nice. Good luck. Yeah, I was really surprised. I was like, is that a Tama? <laughs> <laughs> His face seems so familiar. Yeah. He's, his mind is set on getting to the car now. So yeah. yeah. He always leaves us behind at that point. Yeah. Have a good right, hike. Good yep, you too. Bye. 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 Yeah. Safe Bye hike. Yep. All right. Uh, you guys ready for some barbecue? <laughs> It'll be a good conclusion to a great trip. Or a great conclusion. <laughs> We'll sit here for a few minutes, then we'll go catch up with Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> The distance between here and where that car is down there, that was such a pain. <laughs> <laughs> I moved it up here for you guys. Oh man. Man, thank you. How long were you waiting? I don't know, probably like 30 minutes, but I also took like 15 minutes to get down there. Yeah. Dang. I just, I didn't stop. Once. We're free now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Thomas, take us away. Hi, Captain. How's everyone feeling? How are you feeling, Thomas? Oh, I'm feeling so much better now. How are you feeling, Brian? Couldn't be better. Feeling really good.
50th episode, 50th trip, Dude. 50 more. <laughs> So I've got my IBC cream soda, which hopefully will cure my IBS. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's like liquid, liquid butter and cream. <laughs> I really don't need two meats, but I was like, well, they only have ribs and sauce, so I'll just get both. Mm, that's really good, man. Good seasoning. Man, I should have gotten two for... <laughs> Here you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that mac and cheese looks real good. Are these green chilies or yeah. jalapenos? Mm. Oh. Mm, green chilies, on point. Potato salad. Potato salad's also on point. Let's try this creamed corn. Mm. Oh, that's good eating. <laughs> Lemonade's good. Wow, that's actually really good. That's kind of crazy. I'm gonna try your salad too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow, that is good. Whoa. Mm. Shells are the best pasta shape. <laughs> Hands down. I think this is the lager. Mm, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's like very light, but it's got that hoppy taste. Like usually I don't like hoppy beer, but that's very good. So this place opened an hour and a half ago, is that right? Yeah, already sold a lot of everything. We're yeah. lucky we got here when we did. Like that was like a couple of customers. Mm -hmm. Man. Within minutes. None of this animal goes to waste. <laughs> Mm, the barbecue sauce got a tangy sweetness to it. So we're standing by that Thomas is wrong. Ribs are better than brisket, right? <laughs> How are these ribs? <laughs> really good. Wow. How is that? A little bit, but it's good. I like it. Oh yeah, it's like citrusy. <laughs> How was your meal? Good? How was yours? Good? How was yours? It was acceptable. It was nutrition for my body. Why? <laughs> Why? I agree with Thomas on this one. You know? Way better than I thought it would be, actually. <laughs> I would say this is a great post-hike meal experience. Would you all agree? <laughs> oh yes, I feel like a knight around the table. <laughs> I am the samurai knight and you are the robot knight. <laughs> Robo knight. <laughs> This is actually a really comfortable chair. <laughs> After seeing all those agave plants on the hiking trail, I now know what it feels like to be one of them. <laughs> you are thoroughly agave <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. You can get access to weekly live streams, in-depth updates, bloopers, commentaries, and more. We also have t-shirts available, which you can find by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I live in the Elaine R. Anthony building on West 81st Street on the 11th floor. My name is Sunjan Huang. I believe in appreciating fine art. In the morning, I start by approaching the fine works of Gavin Ryan I have hanging on my wall. I have a thousand pieces now. 
Afterwards, I use the toilet and brush my teeth with Charlie Joe's Honey Almond Toothpaste. Then, I put on designer shoes by Expedition Research, LLC. Designer pants by John Truitt, with specialty folds to prevent chafing. And finally, a designer shirt by Jasper Caparata, with extra cleavage for freedom of movement. There is an idea of a Sun Jan Huang, some kind of abstraction. But there is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. And though I can hide my cold gaze and you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours, and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable, I simply am not there. That's no way to walk. As my idol James Rakitsky says, you must be like water. He looks more like a stiff tree. Keep watching, look. Look, 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 look. Oh! If you had trained at my Kung Fu school, you would have learned real balance. Here's my business card. You see, with the flying toe technique of Madeline Holly, he could have kept his balance. And look at this chump over here, trying to set up his tent. First of all, with the Cristina Alvarez technique of the eight lotuses, he could have kept the hair out of his eyes. And with the William Garnett toad style, he could have inflated the tent immediately. And finally, with the Jesus Castillo and Jamie Paguaga eight triagram style of magnet force, he could have instantly snapped the poles in place. And look at this man over here. He's having so much trouble collecting his firewood. If he had learned John Scott's eight slashing hands, he wouldn't even need that knife. Allow this appointment lightly. The council does not. Disturbing this move is by Chancellor Aquia Gia, sorry. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? I did not hit her. It's not true. This is bull crap. I did not. Take a seat, young Jay Raimundo. Forgive me, Master Salvador Gonzalez. We have surveyed all the outlined systems, but we have not found any signs of General Dan Vulcans. Nor have we seen Admiral Debra or their subordinates, Mila and Sam. Hiding in the outer rims, Vulcan is. The Lin in Rocco system we must sweep. What about the attack on the Suintan system? We do not have many Great Lake watercrafts to spare. Go, I will. Good relations I have with their leader, Senator Douglas Jackson. It's settled then. Aaron Jones will take a fleet to the twin moons of Leon and Lu Lin. May the force be with us all. Oh, hi, Mark. William, I'd like you to meet my dog, Serenity. She got me through some pretty dark times and saved my life. Ugh. Captain Nikki, that's a cat. T.S., thank you so much for watching our videos. We hope you get to cherish your memories with your dog, Serenity. And remember, no one can take the sky from you. Brian Nakagaki wants to give a shout out to his brother, Brandon Nakagaki. Thanks for being the best brother ever, and I love you. And get back to grinding FF14. Oh, thank you. Not you. Happy belated birthday to Anusha from Sanwar1. Good luck on your recovery from surgery. All your friends and family are rooting for you. You are always in their thoughts. Good luck. Brian and Aussie Yamagato would like to give a shout out to all who hike and leave no trace. Shout out from Jason Bourgeois and Carrie Larson. To the Adventure Archives community for always being so supportive of us. We also share the sentiment. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Brian and Katia Strom would like to shout out their free energy group, magvortex.org. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> shout out to Gabe and Gia. Thank you so much for watching. And good luck on the 50 miles on the Ice Age Trail. 
Mary St. Cabbage would like to give a shout out to Claire and Anna. Now that she has a new knee, she wants to hit the trails. New knee? Not if I can help it. <laughs> hey, hey, yo bear, yo, get out of here bear. Out here in the jungle, there's only room for one bear, and that's me, Bear Grylls. Also, Richard Friendly Amori would like to give a shout out to Adventure Archives for all the great videos and whatever else they do. <laughs> Shout out to Mukund and Benny and Sayali. <laughs> <laughs> Disturbing this movies by Senate. Damn it. <laughs> Disturbing this movies by Chancellor Aquia. <laughs> I did not hit her. <laughs> it's not true. Oh <laughs> yeah, in fact, we should cut back to you and suddenly you have a water bottle. Something bad goes wrong. <laughs> it's like when you're tenting with Robbie, there's like a 5% chance he poops in this <laughs> <laughs> And like a 10% chance he punches you in the middle of the night. <laughs> or screams.